Hello you guys, this is Ben. I hope you're all doing well. So here is the uh, prepared settings tweaks video that I promised you so that hopefully you can get your simulator looking a bit more like mine. I'm going to try and make this very quick, ideally less than five minutes, that's probably too uh, a little too low. Uh, so it'll probably be about 10 minutes. I want to make this easy to, to digest and follow and have you up and running quickly. So first things first, just a disclaimer. Your sim may not look exactly like mine. That is for a variety of reasons. Land class, uh, just general... <coughs> ground texture um texture ground textures that you may have installed um water textures you may have installed etc there are so many variables your monitor settings uh your monitor color profile so many variables involved that your sim will probably not look exactly like mine just like mine won't look exactly like the guy next door to me etc etc there's there's a lot going on. Don't expect your sim to look precisely like mine, but hopefully this makes it look better or close to mine or wherever uh, you want it to. So that's that's the first thing. Um, for what it's worth, people ask me about uh, textures and whatnot that I'm using. Laying it out right now, I use Orbex Global. I then, on top of that, have UTX layer that serves as both vector data and land class. It's two in one. I do not use Orbex Vector. I use UTX on top of Orbex Global. I use also use Orbex HD trees and I use default water. I'll put that in the description somewhere. Those are what I use for ground textures, land class, trees, uh, and water. Um, so as far as all of this goes, uh, let me pull open Chrome. Now there will be a Dropbox link that's going to have most of what you need. The rest of it I will show you separately. Um, so, but this Dropbox links Dropbox links will. Ha Oh my gosh, I cannot speak. This Dropbox link will have what you need for the most part, the uh, the various configs and so forth. Um, I'll probably include more stuff in this than you currently see. I'll probably have an FSX, CFG, um, perhaps some other stuff as well. But So this will be updated. But there will be a link to this particular folder which will contain things referenced in this video. So, before we go anywhere, let me give credit to uh, who needs it. So the this package that I'm using is an assem essentially an adapted version of the Ultra Realism Pack from Pele from Avsim. I'm sure you guys have heard of this. It is very similar to his Realism Pack, however I've made some adaptations to it. Uh, full credit to him. The sky textures were made by Pele himself along with Eddie Butcher and Gabriel Rodriguez. Not all of them collaboratively, but them separately, and then I've compiled their textures uh, to use as what I see as kind of the ideal sky texture set. So credit to these guys before we go anywhere else. Now, let's get into the kind of nuts and bolts of this. First things first, you're going to want to download all of these, obviously. Um, and once you have downloaded them to wherever they have gone, in my case, my downloads folder, you will see the four of them here. So let us start with the so sun and sky texture. So this is very straightforward. You take your sky textures here, your dot zip. You're going to open it, uh, unzip it. You'll see a subfolder called sky textures. And then within that subfolder, there will be all of your sky textures. Now all you need to do is open your prepared directory, wherever that may be. Go to texture. There's a texture folder in the main directory. And copy and paste all of these sky textures, drag and drop, and uh, you want to move and replace all the uh, sky textures. If you want to back up, go ahead. Uh, if not, that's fine, but move and replace all the sky textures. I'm not going to do that. I already have them installed. There's your sky textures done. Now, as for your sun, you're going to unzip the sun folder. You're going to unzip the subfolder called sun. And you're going to copy suneffect.cfg into your P3D main directory, and it will ask you to move and replace. Don't move, except move and replace the, the suneffect.cfg. Uh, fairly self explanatory. And then sunglowa.bmp, you're going to drag that again into your texture subfolder in the P3D main directory. Move and replace. There's your sun. Done. Quick, easy. There you have it. As far as cloud textures go, for those of you wondering about my cloud textures, I do use Rex Clouds now for the high mid-level clouds. You can use set 4 here um, from Rex Texture Direct or set 8 again. Set 4 or set 8 are the ones that I like. It's personal preference. And the soft clouds that I use. Um, now, 
let me uh, tell you that this is Rex Texture Direct combined with Soft Clouds. So essentially, what that means is um, the numbers on some of these cloud packages may differ. If you just have Soft Clouds, then these numbers will differ. I'm on top of that. Don't worry about it. Um, so bear that in mind. I use uh, soft cloud set 24 now, as I just said. If you're using just soft clouds without integration into Texture Direct, I believe this is going to correlate to set 8. I could be mistaken, but I believe that this is set 8 uh, if you're just using the soft cloud standalone without Texture Direct. So those are the uh, the cloud textures I used. You can install those as you uh, as you please. <coughs> With that done. Uh, that covers the clouds. Now, uh, PTA would be the next uh, relevant aspect of this. Now, for those of you who have seen my PTA video, this will all be familiar. For those of you who haven't, I'm not going to take the time to re-explain what PTA is. However, I will put a link in the description of this video to the website for PTA that Yuri made. It's essentially this shader customization tool made by a fellow named Yuri. I also put a link to my tutorial video so you can familiarize yourself with it. At any rate, PTA. So um, there is a PTA preset and it is called uh, PD Normal Haze. Now in the Dropbox folder, however, it is titled differently. It's called Vertigo PTA. So when you download all of these, what you'll want to do is go to Preset, Open, Downloads, and open Vertigo PTA.ini. That will be it. Now again, that is under Downloads, Vertigo PTA.ini. You want to open that. That is the preset that I am using in PTA with my current settings. Um, here it's called PD Normal Haze, but again, the name of that has changed. The PTA uh, preset, very straightforward, preset open, uh, loaded in, and that is that. Now, I do use NVIDIA Inspector as well, so if uh, you allow me to open up NVIDIA Inspector here, for those of you who use NVIDIA Inspector, you'll be familiar with it. For those of you who don't, I may include a download link. However, it's been out for so long and everybody's so familiar with it, I don't think it'll be necessary. Um, Maybe if you have questions about NVIDIA Inspector specifically, uh, post a comment or message me and I'm happy to get back, but I'm sure most of you know what it is. Just a couple tweaks in here, and I will show you what they are. So my NVIDIA Inspector tweaks, if I'm looking here, huh. Okay, well then something has changed. I do generally have a 30 frame uh, limiter in NVIDIA Inspector. I don't know why that is no longer on. So this is something that should be there. I apologize for that, guys. Frame rate limiter, 30 FPS. I use this, and I believe that had been set, but apparently it's not set. So frame, li frame rate limiter, 30 frames. Anti-aliasing mode, enhance the application setting. Anti-aliasing transparency super sampling, four times sparse grid super sampling and texture filtering high quality. Those are the only changes I have made in here. Frame rate limiter, th limiter to 30, anti-aliasing mode, enhance the application setting, anti-aliasing transparency super sampling, four times sparse grid, and texture filtering quality high quality. Um, I'll take screenshots of this and post that in there. However, you can just look at this and see for yourself. And by in there, I mean in the description so that you can reference NVIDIA Inspector. Active Sky 16, um, uh, what I'm just going to do is include a download. Now, that's actually already in Dropbox, if I remember correctly, the, uh, the Active Sky 16.cfg. Um, so that'll be a download, and you can just spit that straight into Active Sky. Um, for those of you who don't use Active Sky 16, you can use your own preferred settings for whatever weather software <coughs> that you are using. Now, as far as my um, P3D uh, CFG goes. The only change I have in here, the only custom change in my P3D CFG is this affinity mask under job scheduler. So you can make a custom entry job scheduler affinity mask. I'm using 242. I've used 84 in the past. Um, I'm not going to take the time to explain what affinity mask is or what it does. Essentially, it, it uh, affects the way that your processor um, handles P3D in the way that it kind of allocates the load across your processor and there are various settings that uh, uh, allow your processor to do this in different ways and some are ideal for 
you know, hyper-threading, enabled hyper-threading, disabled, uh, and then depending on how many cores you have, etc., etc. You're welcome to research this independently and find the setting that works best for you. I'm currently using 242, but this is my only CFG tweak. Um, and then the only thing left to cover will be the in-sim settings. Okay, so the last bit of this video here will just be my in-sim settings now. You're welcome to uh, just pause the video and look at these. I'll also have screenshots in the Dropbox link to my in-sim settings, to my NVIDIA inspector settings, um, as well as anything else I see relevant um, so that you can just look at those directly. Um, and if there's anything else that I want to scre take screenshots of, I will insert that. But in sim settings, again, feel free to take a look at these. I'm not going to really explain them, but you can see FXAA, MSAA, texture filtering, texture resolution, etc. 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 So I'll pause the or allow the video to sit here for a moment. Ditto for scenery. Ditto for lighting. And I do use HDR, by the way. Ditto for weather, and lastly, uh, traffic as well, or the lack thereof. So with that done, you should be able to see all of these uh, <coughs> various settings tabs and be able to pause the video and mimic your settings or uh, tweak them as you see fit. Now again, this is what works for me. These are settings that work for me that I, uh, with my hardware, seems to be smooth and visually appealing. Again, your mileage will vary. Uh, hardware is going to have an effect among uh, many other things. There's so many variables involved. Anyway, I hope this video is helpful, guys. I hope you enjoy the new look of your simulator. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please uh, drop something in the comment uh, section of the video, video below, and I will attempt to uh, to get back to you as soon as possible. If I left anything out that you guys see is relevant, please let me know, and I will try, sorry, try to update the video. Uh, but that should cover it. Uh, at any rate, stay safe, guys. Take care, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.